the Scythians, High Plains Drifters. Let me take you on a sensei ride. Welcome to the BC Marijuana Party Bookstore, where you'll find a wide variety of informative books and magazines, as well as top-of-the-line hemp products from all parts of the hemp spectrum. We also carry the highest quality smoking devices and smoking accessories. While you're here, you can also check out Pot TV Studios or even watch Pot TV on our store computer. We also are the information center for the BC Marijuana Party headquarters, so come and check us out. We're at 307 West Hastings in beautiful BC. See you there. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Burning Shiva Hour. I'm your host, Chris Bennett. Today in the Burning Shiva Hour, we're going to discuss one of the most uh, interesting yet barbaric cannabis-using groups. This is the uh, pre-Christian era group known as the Scythian, who, Scythians, who ruled much of the ancient world from about the 7th century BC to the 1st century BC. Now, the Scythians were the earliest known uh, horseback riding tribe, and uh, because of this high mobility, they're credited with spreading uh, cannabis knowledge throughout most of the ancient world. Uh, Originally, they uh, originated along the Russian steppes uh, close to the border of Russia, but uh, as uh, Chinese tribes started to infringe upon their territory, they spread out through much of uh, uh, Central Asia and uh, also reached as far as Europe. In fact, Celtic art is uh, deeply influenced by the Scythian designs and Scythian motifs, which itself are deeply influenced by the visions they received using cannabis and other entheogenic substances. Now, the Scythians had no written language, so much of what we know about them comes from uh, Greek authors and stuff like that, who wrote down many of their myths and artifacts, which have been found in numerous Scythian tomes. The, the Scythians had a habit of uh, burying their dead royalty in um, caves and stuff that, uh, underground caves and stuff that were filled with water and froze, preserving many of the artifacts uh, for modern archaeologists to discover. And this tells us a great deal about the Scythian tribes, including a lot about their use of cannabis. So when we come back, we're going to discuss the Scythians, the high plains drifters of the ancient world. For over a century, botanists, anthropologists, theologians, etymologists, and other scholars have been talking about the ancient biblical references to cannabis. For the first time ever, these agent references are put into the context of the biblical storyline. Learn the secret history of cannabosum. Read Sex, Drugs, Violence, and the Bible. Available through the BC Marijuana Party Bookstore and Dope Fiends Books. Sex, Drugs, Violence, and the Bible by Chris Bennett and Neil McQueen. Published by Forbidden Fruit Publishing. Now, the Scythians had elaborate armor costumes, full headdresses, uh, full body armor, and as well, they decorated the horses that they rode with the same type of elaborate costumes, and they, they must have indeed presented a terrifying sight to the many tribes that they descended upon. The Encyclopedia Britannica gives us the following account of Scythian dress. Many royal Siths wore bronze helmets and chainmail jerkins of the Greek type, lined with red felt. Their shields were generally round and made of leather, wood, or iron, and were often decorated with a central gourd ornament in the form of an animal, but other tribesmen carried the square or rectangular ones. All used a double curved bow, shooting over the horse's left shoulders. Arrows had trefoil-shaped heads linked according to the date of bronze, irons, or bone. The Scythians themselves also had full-body tattoos, and uh, we're going to show you some of the intricate designs that they wore. They wore their mythologies on their skin, literally. With this combined with uh, their iron-outfitted horses, they were kind of like the hell's angels of the ancient world. And people who have seen uh, John Millis's epic uh, based on L. Ron Howard's character Conan, Conan the Barbarian, may recognize a, 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 a depiction of the Siths as the horseback riding uh, demon looking guys that, that ride in on uh, Conan's Sumerian village when he's a child killing his parents. So there really were like a very terrifying looking group. But uh, um, the use of cannabis may have mellowed them in later times as we'll get to near the end of this discussion. 
history records that they invaded Judea around 625 BC and even reached the borders of mighty Egypt where they uh, reached peace terms under conditions by the intimidated rulers of that kingdom. Now the act of war was uh, one which the Scythian women participated in with the men. And um, it's recorded that a, a Scythian woman had to kill a, a male in battle before being allowed to take a husband, and that the women had to on the right breast so they'd be able to uh, brandish a sword better. The pectoral muscles would develop much like a man's. In fact, mythology records that when the Scythians came upon the Amazon women barbarians, they mated with them, and that is, has much to do with the fierceness of their race. So uh, um, these women, as well as the men, would ride into battle with full body tattoos, armors, brandishing swords, wreaking fear into the hearts of their enemies and victims. As far as the cannabis use was concerned, it was an integral part of the city of cult of the dead, wherein they paid homage to dead and departed leaders. After the death and burial of their king, the Scythians would purify themselves by setting up small teepee-like structures, which they would enter and inhale the fumes of burning hemp. In a famous passage written about 450 B BC, the Greek historian Herodotus describes these funeral rites as follows. When, therefore, the Scythians have taken some seed of this hemp, they creep under the cloth and put the seeds on the red-hot stones, but this being put on smoke and produces such a steam that no Grecian vapor bath would surpass it. The Scythians, transported by this vapor, shout aloud. Now, Herodotus you know, looked at these seeded buds and thought that what the active ingredients in, in those buds was was the seeds, but they were obviously burning the plant matter and calyxes around the seeds, as there's no psychoactive properties in the hemp seed, despite the DEA's allegations to the otherwise. Um, and what was left in the charred remains, which the uh, archaeologists found, were the burnt seeds themselves. Now, Herodotus's claim was at one time thought to be myth, but as uh, Ernest Abel explains in Marijuana, the first 12,000 years, digging into some ancient ruins near the Eltea Mountains on the border between Siberia and Outer Mongolia, Professor S.I. Rudenko found a trench about 160 square feet and about 20 feet deep. On the perimeter of the trench were skeletons of a number of horses. Inside the trench was the embalmed body of a man and a bronze cauldron filled with burnt marijuana seeds. Clearing the site further, Rudenko also found some shirts woven from hemp fibers and some metal sensors designed for inhaling smoke, which did not appear to be connected with any religious rite. To Rudenko, the evidence suggested that the inhalation of smoldering marijuana seeds occurred not only in religious contexts, but also as an everyday activity in which the Scythian women participated alongside the men. Now, this is known to be a fact because um, re more recently, uh, that was in 1929 that Rudenko made his discovery, and more recently they found the uh, Siberian tomb of a Scythian queen, or a religious leader, or something like that. She was obviously somebody of high importance. And besides finding finely woven hemp fibers that were woven as fine as silk, they found an elaborately decorated bag that contained marijuana, meant to, uh, to, meant to accompany this tattooed queen into the other world. A fascinating discovery. and. Uh, um, when you look at this bag, you know, it really is a marvelous item, uh, much like much of the Scythian art which we've been displaying uh, throughout this show. The Encyclopedia Britannica describes the cauldrons found at these Scythian burial sites as follows. These cauldrons varied in size from quite small examples to others weighing as much as 75 pounds. An overwhelming majority have a solid base shaped like a truncated cone around which the fire was heated. The upper, upper section is a hemispherical bowl with handles shaped like animals fixed to, rim, to, to the rim opposite each other. At Perizak, small cauldrons filled with stones and hemp seeds were found standing beneath leather or felt tenlets with three to six supports. Now, uh, um, as well as cannabis use, there was a, a lot of sacrifices that took place at the 